And we drove by the Fortis building and I saw the sign and said, ah, oh, here's Fortis. I did not know that they are here in Grenchen. I heard about that they there is something possible with this mm. company. And then we came there and I just asked the CEO, is it possible to buy Fortis? Yes or no? And he said, uh, yes. Okay, let's start talking. And mechanical watches have to be timeless. You have to love them in 20 and 30 years and not just for the next two, three years when the trend is going on. That's why we redefined everything in a modern way, which was really complicated to produce because everybody told me that's technically not possible to produce. It begs me to the question, the B42, the classic cosmonaut watch. Yes, I expected this question. <laughs> It's conspicuous by its absence. It's not on the website. No. Nope. <laughs> now, wait for autumn. I should not tell more. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Watch Gecko YouTube channel. Once again, coming from the bunker. As you know, we've been doing a regular series where we've been interviewing CEOs, the, the movers and shakers, the great and good of the watch industry. And we're lucky to have a very special guest today. I'm delighted to introduce Joop Philip, the CEO of Fortis. Good morning, sir. Hi, hi. Good morning. <laughs> How are you today? Fine, very fine. The weather is good. shit, but uh, I'm feeling good. Really? Well, it's not bad here. Um, so oh, yeah? we've got we got one up on you there. Anyway, it's no mystery looking at the sign behind you, which brand we're talking about today. Yes. Um, so if we jump straight in, for I, I mean, I'm sure people obviously who follow our channel are very familiar with your your, your company brand, but we do always get emails and um, voicemail messages from people that are quite new to the watch world. So, mm -hmm. would you be able to give us a little summary of who Fortis is, just to put everything of, in perspective? Of course, just in a in a quick quick way. So, uh, Fortis is is uh, one of the the oldest still existing watch brands in Switzerland. So, it was founded 1912. Of course, there are brands much more older, but we are one of the, the last really family owned uh, uh, Swiss watch brands producing since 1912 continuously without any breaks or anything else. We one of the most historic brands. What, what that's my personal opinion, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, so from, from history wise, if you're talking about a Swiss watch brands, if you talk about Swiss watches, Fortis has done a lot of for this kind of brand of Swiss watches. So we are, have uh, developed the first automatic wrist, wrist watch in 1926 with together with John Harwood, who was an uh, inventor from the Isle of Man. And uh, Fortis has produced since 1926 the first automatic wrist watches in series uh, here in Grantian, in our building. Uh, we are still in the same building since 1912. Wow. Then uh, we... There have been so many things. So we have one produced one of the first uh, uh, water resistant watches. We have developed the first plastic watch. If you know the Swatch, of course, it was a really original uh, invented by Fortis in the, in the 60s. It was, it's, it's called Flipper. It's, uh, we do not produce it anymore, but it was one of the most successful watches in these times. Uh, Fortis has produced, I think, one, maybe one million pieces per year. The most people don't know that that the original wow. plastic watch is coming from Fortis. Uh, we, we, we're producing Flieger watches since the 80s. Uh, we're producing uh, diving watches since, since the 50s, the Marine Master, which still exists. And we are now uh, mainly into space watches. Since the 90s, we uh, official supply of astronauts and cosmonauts with our watches uh, on, on a professional way. And in 2018, I took over the company. So, and then these days we relaunched the brand, we rebuild the brand and re we redefine our watches. This is uh, just in a short and quick and dirty way. So there are many things to tell, uh, but for this, we need some more days. Yeah, I, th I, think, <laughs> I think people will find it surprising that you've been around for that long. Um, especially if you've been making professional dive watches in the 50s. That's something because we are, Fortis is now, today's Fortis is known for pilot and space watches. Yeah. This is what, when we are talking, if you talk about pilot or space watches, Fortis is always, always uh, uh, named. Uh, but nobody knows that the Marine Master is our oldest existing watch collection we are still producing. So over 70 years now, we are producing diving watches. Uh, and the people know us 
for the for the pilot. So, but that's that's life, I think. Yeah, it, it is really interesting because we've certainly noticed with talking to some other brands that um, there is a there's definitely a move within the industry to go back to what we used to what you would call the golden age of a particular activity and we're seeing a lot of these yep. golden age dive watches appear the cushion cases of the 70s yep. the classic 60s even 50s designs we are noticing in the magazine are hugely popular again this is the i think this is uh, the trend of kind of vintage watches in a modern way which what what we don't do so we we do not want to, to produce old models, like uh, take an old design and produce it in a modern way. We only want to go further. And, and the, the, the goal is to produce contemporary watches, which are timeless. So they believe now and here and not, not vintage and not future. We, it really has to be uh, now in a, in, a, in a contemporary way. So that's, that's such our... an interesting strategy because yeah. I we are noticing as well that a lot of people are riding on the uh, the coattails of previous designs, shall we say. I'm phrasing that very nicely there. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it, pe <laughs> people are doing that. Um, even some of the enormous brands that are probably quite close to you that you know that there's a lot yep. that they go oh, well let's just re-release something from 1962 and say yeah. it's a special edition oh and we'll charge you two thousand euros more for it yeah of course it, it's it's a kind of lifestyle at the moment to have this these these vintage style uh yeah. but for me for me it's it's just a trend and i think uh, especially um, um analog watches mechanical watches have to be timeless and you have to love them in 20 and 30 years and not just yeah. for the next two three years when the trend is going on uh, and that's why we redefined everything and say no it has to be in a in a, in a modern way you love just you, you will still love in 10 20 30 years and that's why we decided to do no vintage stuff well i think that's i applaud you for that i think that's wonderful you're bucking that trend i think it's great and i think it's also a design challenge to come up with a watch that will yeah. do what you said there because it's so easy it is. to fall into the what's trendy yeah, bracket. And it's, sorry, it's 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 easy and it's boring. <laughs> wow, I, I, <laughs> for me I, I personally, can, we've got a subscribership of about fifty thousand for the YouTube channel, and I'm hoping I can hear fifty thousand people clapping their hands now because I think I think that will really resonate. <laughs> I <with> hope people. so. <laughs> so you, now, you as, an, yeah, as, as a as a as a brand as a brand, you always have to be an individual. So you you are the brand and the brand stands for something and you should not uh, uh, work against and just uh, uh, refurbish old models. It's, uh, I don't like it. <laughs> no, I, I love it. I think, you know, you're, it's a bit like the, I don't know. It makes me think of Kennedy's speech before they went to the moon. We're doing it because it's hard, okay. not because it's easy. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's a great, great way to look at it. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, if, if, yourself... if it's not a challenge, everybody can do it. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But now the big challenge is, I, I did a little bit of homework, as I'm sure you could imagine before we spoke. You're not from the watch industry, nice. are you, sir? No. No, not original. I'm so, original from the food, food industry. <laughs> so this is, uh, I mean, I've, I've, I've done a little bit of research, but our listeners won't have. Please yeah. tell us how this really big transition happened uh so the story is in a, in a short way so i'm coming from a, a family business um i'm now the fourth generation this uh, in this business so we and my, my other company is getting now 100 years old in in september and it was founded by my uh, grand grandfather and we producing fruit concentrates and coloring for food from fruit so we we put at the end we are a fruit company so we uh, are working with, with all kinds of fruits, fruits, different, I think we have 50 different kind of fruits from strawberry to some exotic things like uh, passion fruit and of course, uh, camu camus uh, or uh, dragon fruit or something else. Yeah. So we're doing everything. Uh, and uh, that, this is what I did for the last 20 years, mainly. And I still do it. Because this is our family business. I'm doing it together with my two brothers and sister. Uh, but 
after 20 years talking about strawberries, you can imagine that it's getting really boring. <laughs> and I tried to find, I, I okay. got, now, now, now I'm, now I'm 40, I'm getting 47 now. Uh, but when I, when I got 40, I start thinking about, is, is that all you want to do in your lifetime? Do you need something new? Do you need a challenge? Because at the end, it's, 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 a, it's a good working company. It works. It's, everything is fine. But at the end, you're sitting in your office and uh, reading numbers and talking always about the same. They, because in the food business, it's not an innovative industry. You're, sure. you, you're producing juice. Mm. <laughs> it's the same like 100 years. There's no yeah. change. And I think I'm a, I'm a little bit more I'm an, a creative guy. I wanted to do something new. I wanted to build up. And I, and I said, okay, if you want to do something for the next generation, for my, for my kids, or if, uh, and then you have to start now because you will need 10 to 20 years to build a really good family-based company. This okay. is... That they, it's, it's not possible to build up a, 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 a good, a solid company in three or four years. That's not possible. It always takes minimum 10 years up to 20. So that's why I said, okay, now you have to start now. And then I start talk, uh, start looking at companies because I'm not, I'm not a founder with, uh, to, to, to build up a brand new company, to found a company and print, build it up. I'm more the guy uh, buying an old company and rebuild it. So that's, that's more what I like to do. So I started to look at, at companies and uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge Fo watch fan. I'm a big Fortis fan. I have a lot of Fortis watches in my, in my collection. This is the main brand I always looked for. Uh, and then I had the chance, a, a friend of me called me and said here in Grenchen where Fortis is located, he, he has a company there and he wants to sell it to me. And he, it, this was an, a hand producer for, for the watch industry. And uh, he took me there. And we drove by the, from uh, at, the, at the Fortis building. And I saw the sign and said, ah, here's Fortis. I did not know that they are here in Grenchen. I never saw the building. I just know the brand. And I said, ah, do you know them? And I said, yes, I know them. We're producing the hands for them. And I said, okay, I heard about that. They, there is something possible with this mm. company. Uh, and I said, okay, I, can, you, can you do an appointment for this afternoon? I want to talk to, to the CEO. And he said, yes, okay, we, let's, we can do. And then he called him and said, yes, okay, no problem. Two o'clock, you can, uh, you can drive by. Uh, and then we came there and it, I just asked the CEO, is it possible to buy Fortis? Yes or no? And he said, uh, yes. <laughs> okay, let's start talking. <laughs> and then it was a, it was a six month negotiation and then I bought the company. <laughs> I was, was going to say, quite, I think fast. <laughs> the last time, the last decision I think I made that quickly was probably just buying something like a mobile phone. <laughs> yeah, maybe something like that. Okay, it took six months at the end, but uh, the decision yeah. was made really fast. And my friend was a little bit angry because I did not buy his company, but that's life. <laughs> Now, I, I did read somewhere that your brother is in the aviation industry and he was, did, yes. he influenced your decision as well a bit? Yes, he did because he he's an uh, an, uh, an an aircraft uh, engineer, uh, and he founded his own company called Aircraft Philip. Uh, I think in the beginning of two thousand, uh, and he was building uh, aluminium and titanium parts for Boeing, Airbus, and all the the, the aircraft okay. industries. And he's of course a pilot. And it all starts in the when when I started looking at mechanical watches. Of course, you talk to your friends. I think like everybody does. If, if before you buy your first automatic watch, you talk to friends who has yeah. the same passion about, uh, and get some tips from them. And of course, I talked to my brother, and he always had a Fortis, and he told me, "Yeah, uh, real pilots wear Fortis. So Fortis is a good Swiss brand. Yeah. Take a look, though." So, but I always was always more into the space watches. I never had a. a a pilot watch because I'm not a pilot, but I, I always fall in love with the cosmonaut. This was always my favorite piece. Yeah. So that's why I bought in 2004 my, my, my first uh, official cosmonaut in titanium. Okay, so you've gone home, you've broken to the family, you've said, kids, I've bought a company. 
Um, no, I talked to my wife before. <laughs> <laughs> that that much we have in common, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, um, so you've got her. You've made the announcement. I'm very curious here. You've it's your first day in your your CEO's office. What sort of status for to sin? What what did you end up getting? I appreciate uh, there'll be, be honest, commercial sensitivities. <laughs> don't worry, but whatever you're happy to tell. Uh, no, 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 no problem. I'm I'm always honest, and I think there's nothing to hide, and I I can tell all the stories. It's not a problem. To be honest, when I came here, it was a totally chaos. Wow. It wasn't the watch industry. The watch industry itself is a little bit chaos. To be honest, it's uh, really old fashioned. Everything is done, of course, done by hand, and that's just from from today to tomorrow. And uh, there's no visionary thinking or else. And and of course, they have to. You have to. Um, I don't, don't know. Sorry for my English. I'm I'm always try to find the right it's, English words for them. For it. It's fine. Um, no, I be, I think you have to clean up everything here in this in in this company. They they're still working, but there was there was no there was no drive. Would you say no, the brand had no been right neglected? Organic. I don't know how to how to explain, but just to explain that so we have we have a big stock on 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 watch parts. Hmm. So we did an inventory at the beginning, and we counted eight hundred twenty four thousand single parts for watches. So that's a lot, and it was still organized by paper. There was no computer system. Just imagine how, <laughs> you know, this, that, that's how they are working. There's still a lot of old companies working like that. And wow. for me, this was, okay, no, you we cannot, this is not prepared for the future. And I think this wow. was the main problem. There want, has not been prepared for the future. And this is what we did for the first years to organize to be a modern company. Right. I mean, my, my follow-up question was going to be, once you've seen what you've got, what were your, if you had like five key objectives, say in the first year or so, what were those objectives? What, one you've obviously answered is to, you know, turn the records into something the automated. Most, of course. I think it's always the same. It, 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 it uh, it's it's not not important if it's a watch company or is it a food company they are all organized by the same way so for the first of all you need for a good company is a team mm. that's the most important and at the end i know what i bought what i bought i saw it many times i visited some many, many times for this and i know what's what's happening here inside before i bought the company uh but the first thing you need a team the team is the most important thing you, that it's not possible to run it by your own I don't know if you have you seen the the Arnold Schwarzenegger documentary on Netflix already. No, uh, I haven't seen it yet, but I have seen it on. Uh, yeah, it's 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 funny because at the end of the I finished finished the, the documentary just two days ago, and at the the last sentence he said that everybody calls him a self self made man, and he explained. A self-made man does not exist. There are no self-made men in the world. There are always a team behind the man on the front. Fair comment. And he's so so he's so right. So I'm I'm the I'm the face in the front, but behind me there's a team. Yeah. And the team is the most important thing. Without team, you cannot you cannot you cannot uh, organize a company like that. And this was the first thing I did to find the right team. And then you start doing you you organize the office, you organize the stock. You, you you make yourself uh, um, um, uh, or to get all the information about the watches and about the market. You get know mm. all the people. I had, you know, these these uh, uh, business cards uh, for all the meetings. After one year, I counted all the business cards on my table, and where there was four hundred, <laughs> so I had four hundred meetings in the first year. It was, <laughs> I tried to, <laughs> yeah, I tried to get know everybody. Yeah. Talk to everybody and learn as much as you can. This was the first first year what we did, and of course to try to develop what's what's the future. What's it? I have a, I had a vision in my mind, of course, where we want to be in ten twenty years, but the way to the goal, it's made by the team and not by me alone. So you have to discuss, 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 discuss. This is what you're doing the whole day. So what what do we want to be in twenty years? 
Well, I I, I think that's, that's that's great. I mean, <laughs> you always, yeah, you had to do it. Yeah. I mean, with regards to you're mentioning that um, eye-wateringly big inventory of parts you had. It sounds like the distance between two planets. Um, what? Yeah. What? How much manufacturing? Where are you doing, and are you doing now, and how much of it is in house? If we were looking at, say, so, let's just say I wanted to buy one of the new Flieger F forty threes, just out of curiosity, mm -hmm, how much mm -hmm. is in? How we work. So first of all, the whole construction and the whole design is made by us in house. So we have our own design. We have, we have our own construction. Uh, so at the end, I said, this is this is our our know how. This should mm -hmm. be in house. The in, the know how has to be inside Fortis. So a lot of brands working with, with external people, with external construction and all this stuff, and or private label companies, uh, too much out there. Um, but we try to do as much in-house as possible if you talk about know-how. So design is made by us, the completely concept is made by us, and the construction. At the end, we have a 3D uh, computer file, mm -hmm. And then we go to the supplier. So we do produce all the parts are produced outside, of course, from experts. It's much more better to buy, to be honest, sometimes it's better to have a movement made by an expert instead of a manufacturer movement. For In sure. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> That's my personal opinion, because the vision of Fortis is to have the most robust tool watch you can get. This is, this, that, that, this is what we want to be. Mm -hmm. And this is what we are now. And for this, you need a perfectly robust movement. And it's much more better to go to, to, to partners which have the experience in a robust movement for the last 100 years instead of starting to do it by yourself. Because to develop a movement, you need 10 to 20 years minimum. And it yeah. costs a lot of, lot of money. And, and it doesn't make sense. So we're going to case suppliers, style, hands, movements. Everything is done by local companies here in the in, in the in the Swiss watch industry so uh, we go there give them the plans and see okay produce it exactly like this so when you say a so, fortis is then, swiss made it is truly swiss made it is truly swiss made of course yeah. some some screws are coming from outside from switzerland oh, because so. they are not producing inside yeah. but that's that's quite normal if you talk yeah. about the car this is what I, uh, it's it's nice to compare if you talk about the tires, they are not made by Mercedes. No, no, no. no. Of course, I mean, they're, they're expats for them. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's quite normal. This is everybody is working like that. So, but at the end, we try to 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 work as local as possible. So, and then coming the quality control. So we're doing the construction, and then the parts are coming, the development together with the supplier, and then we're doing the quality control in in house. Okay. So you have your specification from the supplier. He sends you 100 cases and then you're doing your own quality control and we have our own specification. And then maybe you can throw 10 movements away because they're not good enough for us. Uh, mm. You cannot give them back to the supplier because he says, no, for me, that's okay. Yeah. And we say, no, for us, it's not okay. And this is quality control, I think, is the the biggest part of of a watch okay. of watch producing yeah so and then it, at the end the assembling is in-house the quality control is in so in-house the whole logistic is in-house yeah so only the parts are produced externally yeah so so was there anything with regards to the manufacturing and the quality control you actually had to invest you know hard cash into to get it up to the standard that yes. was your vision yeah, the, the, as I told you, the building is from 1912. We are still in the same building. We are still producing in the same room where the first automatic wristwatch has been produced in 1926. So that is pretty cool. Tried. And yeah, and they had no investment in the building for the last 20, 30 years, I think. So we refurbished the building. So we have. Uh, there, there are two wings, the west and east wing, and the original building from 1912 is the east wing, and it has five floors. And we are working now on three floors, and we refurbish these three floors completely. So it, it's, wow. it's everything is absolutely modern standard now. 
with the feeling of an old building. This was really important for me because I love old houses. I don't know how you see, but I'm I'm more into the old stuff. In if you talk well, about architecture things, I'm speaking and, to you but now I from, like... a th from a three hundred year old cottage. So I'm with yeah, you. Yeah, okay. So so you understand me. But we have yeah. an, uh, an, an a climatization and an air con air conditioning, and we have a, a good heating system and new windows. Where it's not blowing through the house, <laughs> the wind. So, <laughs> can you imagine trying to service a watch with a, a gale coming through yeah. the window? It's, it's not going to yeah. happen, is it? <laughs> no, not now. Uh, so I, we have a, a modern technology, but with an old feeling. So this was quite important for me. So, that 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 yeah. looks amazing. I did look at a couple of the interviews you you did. You did one with one of your colleagues. Um, it might have been called Mario. Da Dario. 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 Yeah, yeah. Dario. That's he was, Dario. And I, 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 Dario. He was, he, he was our sales manager, yes. Yeah, and I, I did see it looked like you were in a very clinical laboratory type environment. So you could see there's, yes. you've obviously changed things clearly. Um, yeah, we, so, we, I we mean, did a lot. So everything was done new at the end. <laughs> so you've, you've kind of brought us up to date. Um, on a screen down there, I have your website up and running. And I wondered, is it possible? Could we take a, a few minutes to look at your three different families of watches and you could tell us of a course. bit about the inspiration course, behind them? So, I, I mean, of course. I'm looking immediately at, well, we'll start with the Fliegers. Um, they've, they're what I always associate with, for, with Fortis, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. I, there was a... Uh, many, many years ago, I lived in the Middle East and you had a big concession in a watch shop in Abu Dhabi and it was always the Fliegers were always out, the very bold black ones that looked like mm -hmm. they'd literally been lifted straight from the cockpit of a of, of the Blackbird mm -hmm. aircraft. They had that real, very yeah. distinct look. But I can see you've definitely tried, looking at it now, to contemporize some of those whilst trying to keep the yeah. same DNA it's it's this was it, it was quite hard to develop this the, the new flieger because it has a history it's we are one of these lucky brands not only have one icon we have two icons the one is a cosmonaut and the second is of course the flieger it is an icon in the watch industry and it was quite hard for us to redefine this watch without we wanted to change so much but we there's an identity in this you have to keep there are a lot of fans out there. Absolutely. You have to <laughs> fulfill their dreams already. Yeah. Uh, so this was a really hard development, and at the end, it, take, it took it took uh, mainly three years to develop, or two and a half. Though the briefing was, we need a watch. Look at the first view, like you have already seen it, but on the second view, you see a lot of new details you never heard about. So well, this was the, the first idea. And at the end, uh, I think we haven't really an, an, uh, did it really good. But at the end, it's green and orange, of course. This was the only thing was clear from the beginning. But the case shape is really classic. Mm. Uh, but it has to be not a vintage watch. It has to be a contemporary watch from these times. Uh, and, and at the end, the Flieger, we, we start talking to our pilots. We are working with a lot of pilots here in Switzerland and ask him what is, what is the most important on a, on a, on a pilot watch? The most brands starting with historic things. So you need this triangle and you need this and you need this. And at the end, if you talk to pilots, they say, Hey, the only thing is important is readability. Forget all, mm. every, everything else. It's all about absolutely, readability. Absolutely. And we said, okay, let's start like this. So reduce everything you need, uh, if, what, what, what's, what you don't need, uh, just about readability. So we, we, we developed these, the, the bricks track. So we have a, a, a black mud dial and the bricks track on top, with which is um, circular brushed. Mm -hmm. And on the bricks track, we have these luminous cubes. We call it bricks. And this is massive looming over. So the lightning by night is, is amazing. And we used, of course, the green super Luminova X1, which is the best Luminova you can get on the market because they're different qualities. Maybe not everybody knows. And the green has the biggest lightning by night and the, the best readability. And that's why we, we, the design was at the end like it is now today. So a classic mm. robust case with a GMT bezel. So that's why we have the bezel is a little bit 
with this yes, area I can, inside. I can see that, but, yeah. But, that, but this is what you need for the grip because mm. normally bezels are always a, a little bit slippy and small. And, but we need a grip to turn it. So we have a 24 click system for, for a half an hour. And so you have an analog GMT on all the pilot watches uh, on the Flieger. And uh, this is, I think, one of the most important things for the pilots flying somewhere on earth, I don't know, and just to have one click click without looking at the watch to see to have the second mm -hmm. time zone. And the rest is, of course, just about readability in a, in a split of yeah. a second. This is the no, most important thing. I've set. used second time zones throughout my previous career a lot. And I, I, it's, 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 it's a complication on a watch that I've always valued. I've never seen it as a gimmick. Yeah. I mean, I think, and once you start to use it, especially if you're a serial traveler, as I was, I was always yeah. overseas, always on planes. It becomes a good thing to have. I mean, I have to say, looking down, I mean, the portfolio of the Fliegers looks superb. I think it's, I can only imagine how tough it must be to come up with something contemporary, yet try and stay loyal, as you said, to the, the fan base. Which is it's not easy. <laughs> it is not easy. It was a really hard way to go, uh, especially in our, yeah. in, at Fortis. We are not working like so. Uh, we, I'm working with the designer, and the designer says it looks like this. No, we're working as a team, and everybody has yeah. the same speech, and uh, everybody has his own opinion. At the end, we're talking as long as we have the same opinion, and this can take a lot of time and a lot Absolutely. of discussions. And yeah. the idea was always to have always design and function combined. So we do not want to have just a design thing or just a functional thing. We always want to combine it. If, if, if the function does not look nice, we don't do it. Hmm. It's difficult, so, again, to draw like the analogy you drew to the automotive industry previously with the tires. It's a yeah. bit like yeah. there's always that anticipation, say, when the new BMW 3 Series comes out or the new Mercedes C-Class. And there's always that, audience that says well it's not as nice as the old one so you really you, the balancing act you're trying it's to do always, is very difficult i think we are just all human beings and everything yeah. what is new we don't like that's quite normal but take your time a good watch that's what i told you yeah. the watch has to look nice in 10 or 20 years so it does not have to, has to look nice now well you have the to good love news it in 10 years, years. And here in Watch Gecko, we're never we never judge stuff quickly because we love to live with things. We love to try yes. them on. We love to experiment with them. Uh, whenever we get a watch in for review, I generally take it away for a few weeks to live with it on my wrist. So you start to gradually mm -hmm. understand it. You start to understand the design ethos. Because I have to say, looking at your the, the Fliegers on the the website, there is one in particular that is standing out to me as being so striking. It's the triple GMT mm -hmm. titanium orange with yes, the gray my, dial. My personal lovely piece. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> this is, this we're was, this was made we're for communicating. Me. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it's so striking. It's almost the, the dial, it almost gives it an industrial look with that colored dial. Yeah. It, it, it's. It's, it, it, it gives it, it – we found with working with watches, as we do every day, we review so many, that every so often a watch, the way the color palette has been done on it actually enhances its functionality, which is crazy because color can't enhance the functionality other than maybe legibility mm -hmm. it can help. But if you choose the right color palette, it makes it somehow seem more functional. And what we always say when we're reviewing watches yeah. is if you're lucky to find one that – I mean, the Speedmaster on my wrist, I would probably put into this bracket. It's more than the sum of its parts. Yes, it is. And I think that F43 has the potential to do that because you can just, it makes you want to look at it. It is. It, I love it, it especially for the Tatem on the, on the Triple GMT. For me, everything is perfect. Of course, yeah. there's three hand watches chronograph, but I love GMTs. The movement is, the, I think, one of the best movements you can get on the market. Then the size is for me perfect because to be honest, I don't like small watches. I'm the mm. old fashioned guy wearing big watches, especially with a, with a good character, not in just in, uh, next, uh, copy of a submariner. Um, no, yeah. it has to be an individual character watch. And, 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 and for me, everything is perfect. Black, white, orange. The, these are the colors I love. I, well, I, I think it's superb. So uh, don't be surprised if you get an email from me saying, um, 
Yep, we'd like to review a watch, and guess what? Guess which one it is. <laughs> you can drive me anytime. <laughs> All right, we'll work on that. Okay, moving across the website to the Marine Master, which you've now told me mm -hmm. dates back to the 1950s, which has really intrigued me. Mm -hmm. Obviously, again, you've done the same thing. You've gone for a highly contemporary design. You've given it this amazing dial design, which is... Yeah. Uh, which gives it this multi, I think multi-layered and multi-textured is the way I would phrase it. And you've created yeah. from my very initial perspective here is what where I'm a bit reluctant to use the word 3d dials. Cause I think it confuses people, but you've got so many layers, even down to the, the text being raised, the, the indices being raised, the, the hatching marking on the dial. Where did this inspiration come from? Uh, so the idea behind the Marine Master was, of course, as you know, the most people don't know that this is the oldest watch collection in the Fortis. Uh, and we said, okay, yes, of course, we are a tool watch company. And of course, a tool watch company has to have a diving watch. I think this is, this is, uh, that's a must. Uh, sure. And of course, the Marine Master is also for me a legend. I have a lot of in my, in my collection from the, from the old models, but it's the same like the pilot watches. We start talking to, to, to the people or the people who wear the diving watch or to divers. And at the end, you find out nobody's diving with his watch. The pilots are flying their planes, but the diving watch buyers, they're not diving. <laughs> so we really find the whole thing and thought about, okay, what's next? Because if you do the most professional diving watch, which would fit to the brand, of course, it does not make sense because the people are buying diving watches because they're going to holiday and lying at the pool. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they're buying diving watches. Because I, and I said, okay, <laughs> let's see it from a different kind of way and thinking out of the box. Okay, let's do an outdoor watch for your, your personal activity. But of course, to have this, 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 this feeling of freedom, of holiday, and for this, you need some colors, you need some structure. Yeah. Of course, it is a professional diving watch with all function for a diving watch you need. But at the end, the design, that's why we said, okay, we need not a flat black mud dial like normally used. We need a, some a structure and we need an, an individual structure which, which fits, fits to the brand and nobody can copy. And that's why we have this, this structure, because if you see behind on me, the, the logo, it's the O of the Fortis logo. So and this ah, is what we took. Okay, so yes. this is no, no, no of course nobody it, can I see copy it us because, be, yeah. yeah, because it's our logo. It's, it's so obvious now when I see it. <laughs> yeah. It's, if you, if you know it, you see it. So, yeah. and, and we did the whole work then in, into details because at the end it's, it's a diving watch. You need a diving bezel. You cannot uh, 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 redefine it from new. But uh, you can work with the dial and you can work with the colors and you can work with the straps and, of course, about readability. So with the index especially, you don't see it, but normally an index is 0 0.2 millimeters high. Our index is 0 0.35. Uh, uh, so we get more Luminova inside. You have more readability by night and et cetera, et cetera. So we have this Lumi ring on the Reho and there are a lot of details on the watch looking awesome and have a, a, a good readability and function. That's, that's a Marine master for me. It's for me, the, the, the perfect, uh, watch. If you, if you want to have a nice watch, which works every day, which is, which is ready for your scratches for all your activities you have by the Marine master. <laughs> Uh, several of my watches get used by the incredibly talented photography team at Watch Gecko, but they always hate using mm -hmm. them because they say they have to spend hours photoshopping all the scratches out. Yes, but we love scratches. We are a, we are a scratch uh, company. <laughs> man, I, I, if it was possible to electronically shake your hand now, I would. It, I'm so <laughs> with you. My my exp yeah. my explorer has been across the Kalahari, across the empty quarter, through the desert, through the jungle, and it looks like it has. But every one of those marks to me is a memory. Yes, that's that's what scratch is all about. This is the problem. I had this these people. I think they destroyed a little bit the market in the last three years now with with COVID and all. They're these 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 uh, spekulanten is the German word. 
these people just buying watches to getting more money in two or three years and yeah. buy a watch, wrap it into paper and put it in the safe. That's not what the watch industry is all about. It's, it's about passion. You have to wear it. <laughs> I hate, I, I am so with you. Yeah. And I've, I've, and I think when you're, if you buy a really, I think what a lot of people um, forget is if you take a, a piece of equipment, say like the Marine Master, you do forget that intrinsically mm -hmm. the company have built it to perform a function. Now, you're absolutely right. Yes. In fact, you're the second CEO of the watch industry who said to me 90% of dive watches never get wet. <laughs> and you're absolutely right. <laughs> of course. Use but it. nevertheless, <laughs> you know, you are yeah. still building a tool watch to purpose. And I just of wish course. more people would use. We, 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 we bang on about this all the time on the magazine. If you've got a lovely tool watch, use the thing. Of course, that's that's why we are doing it. Other, otherwise, buy a dress watch or what else. I, but if you buy a tool watch, you have to use it. You have to wear it. Sometimes I'm really, I'm really wondering because I'm especially for friends. I'm selling watches, and then there's they, they know me for many many years, and I tell them all the stories about forties and said, yes, I want the forties, and they buy one, and then they ask me, can I go swimming with the watch? I says, yes, I told you now for five years, go swimming. <laughs> I have fr I have friends like this. We have the same friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. No, no names. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but uh, very, at the end, on, the Marine sorry. Master is an is is an outdoor watch for every yeah, type. Absolutely. All the, all the Fortis watches are outdoor watches, but especially the Marine Master is for yeah. No right. no appointments. Go out. Well, what one of our. Uh, Roving Reporters is a very, very senior diver in the UK who writes for the magazine. Mm -hmm. And he will, if, if we had company permission, he will take a dive watch and he'll take it down to 30, 40 meters when he's diving around a shipwreck. And A, you get great <laughs> photos. But B, some companies, you can see they're getting little damp patches around their head. You're thinking, oh, he's going to take <laughs> water? No. <laughs> we even had one Not say to us. <laughs> well, one company actually said to us, can you make sure he screws down the crown? <laughs> Seriously, guys? <laughs> um, yeah. So, this is which, takes is. Us, which takes us neatly to... The collection which actually intrigues me most, which is the Stratoliner. Um, so what inspiration are you channeling in the Stratoliner? I, I can take a guess, but I'd rather hear it from, from yourself. I think that the, the Stratoliner was now the most funniest project for me because we have, we have been free in the design and the function. There was no history. The, in the pilot, we had this history of our Flieger. In the Marine Master, we have the history of diving watches, especially the function of diving watches. But with the Stratoliner, for me, it was quite important to have the Stratoliner still in the collection, which is, has also been, I think the first Stratoliners are from the 70s. Mm. Uh, they changed the design a lot of times. Uh, but for me, it, because the Stratoliner from history-wise for Fortis, it was the beginning of our space history. Of course, the really beginning of the space history was in the 60s with the Gemini program from the NASA with the Space Matic. But the real space history uh, begins in the, in the beginning of 90s. And this was all because the, a, a, a Russian general, he saw the Stratoliner uh, on a wrist and he fell in love with the Stratoliner. And he then gave the, uh, the, 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 uh, the order to develop a space watch for these astronauts for the cosmonauts. So, and that was the really beginning of our space history. So the Stratoliner is, is important for us. And we, 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 we thought, okay, what, what we should do with the Stratoliner. And then we had a friend who, who lives in London. His name is Per Wimmer and he bought in 2001, his, the ticket for Virgin Galactic to go with them into space. You know, the, the company from yeah, Richard yeah. Branson to bring tourists. I think they're just now, now it, last week, I think they started the first, the first flight. That's right. They went up and with some uh, Italian he, pilots. Yeah. yeah. He asked us uh, if he should, if he should take some watches with him and then uh, uh, sell them for a charity program or something else. And he said, yes, that sounds like a nice idea. And then, it, uh, then I asked him, when, do, when will you fly? So he said, oh, I don't know, maybe next month, maybe in five years, nobody knows at the moment. This was in 2018. So, uh, and then I said, okay, if it takes a long time, 
to be honest, I can develop a completely new watch for your trip. This would be perfect for the Stratoliner because you go up to Stratosphere. So the name for me is a story. Everything is perfect. And then we started developing this, this watch just for his trip to space. This is, I think, a two, two, three hour mm. trip. Uh, and all the watch is just about this trip and nothing else. You can read the time, wow. of course, but to measure his time, his space trip and back, and that's all. And this, this story, I, 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 I loved it. And then Xavier, our designer, he started to do some drafts and then he prayed this specially designer said, hey, that, that's awesome. Nobody did it before. This is something we have to do. And I love to do things nobody did before. And especially things everybody says that that's not possible. <laughs> I, I, I just think that's just so cool. I mean, and to have your... Yeah to have something created for your, probably your one and only space trip. <laughs> yeah, that's, <it. laughs> this watch will be used for three hours. Of course, you can use it every time, every day, but at yeah. the end, the design is made and the function to measure this trip to space and back. And that's, that's all. And I really love this story. And for, at, at the end, we have a watch, I think with a really unique design. Nobody did it before. With a really unique dial with this Luminova half rings inside. Uh, mm. which was really complicated to produce because everybody told me that's technically not possible to produce because the dial is just 0 0.4 millimeters thick and then you have to uh, bring in the Luminova without having any... It's just have to be flat and nothing else. Right. Uh, and this was really, really co uh, complicated to develop. And then we have this, this case with the rubber inlay inside. You have this uh, straight uh, uh, lock, uh, uh, bracelet and pieces, and which brings a really special uh, character into the watch. And I think this is a, a really unique design. Yeah. It's, a comp it's a new space proof movement. We tested this movement in Stratosphere before in, in Kiruna with a, with a helium balloon. Uh, and we tested it last year with a rocket in space. So we have to be, we've been in space now with this rock, with this, with this wow. movement. All the, every, everything is new. Every song has not done before. And that's why I love this Stratoliner so much. Well, I'll tell you what, it's interesting that we were on this. I was on the same page as you. I'll tell you what it made me feel. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, there's a facility, there's a great facility on your website where you can transition the watch from day to night. Yes. When you transition it tonight and you just get the loom picture, it reminded yeah. me enormously. I'm just quickly going to move here and get something <laughs> off, off my car. It reminded me of a NASA mission patch. Okay. <laughs> there are a lot of mission what? patches, you know. <laughs> yeah, but it just, I thought when I saw that loomed picture, it's the, 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 the blue crescent and the, as you said, the, 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 the double crescents, it looked like, you know, when the sun comes behind the earth or the moon, you get that incredible, mm -hmm. tiny, bright semicircle. And I just thought yeah. that would have looked fantastic as a mission patch on somebody's arm. It could, yeah, that, that's a good idea for a mission patch, of course. But at the end, the design came from this function to measure these mm. three steps of this space journey yeah. he has. So he has to fly with the mothership and the spaceship and then the yeah. uh, microgravity. And there's uh, three lumi parts or the three time zones he has to measure. Uh, and it, that's how, how the design comes. This is what I told you. So function and design has always worked together. It's hugely inventive. I love it. I absolutely love it. You, you, you sold me on the name Stratoliner, and when I saw the loom, I thought, absolutely superb. Um, Thanks. Oh. I mean, one of the things I tend to do writing for the magazine is I'm always writing about space watches because, as I will show you later when we're off camera and you can't see at the moment, I'm surrounded by stuff on this side of the room. Um, <laughs> but it begs me to the question, the B42, the classic cosmonaut watch, Yes, I expected it's, this question. <laughs> it's, it's conspicuous by its absence. It's not on the website. Nope. <laughs> no. Wait for autumn. I should not tell more. Ah, <laughs> no. Okay. Of course. It, I, I told you before that the, the cosmonaut was my first Fortis, yeah. and I still wear it after 20 years, or mainly 20 years. Uh, and of course, this is an icon. And this is, has also to be redefined like all the other watches. 
That was so for my me, it's exact quite words important. I wrote there. B42 yeah. is an icon. <laughs> <laughs> it is an icon. Uh, but of course, you have to redefine it. You have to do it. And, and I think an evolution wow. should be. Because for me, the, 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 it began always the space station Mir. Then it continues on the ISS. For mm. me, it's now history. And now we get the next step to Mars. We get the next step to to um, uh, to space. I think space changed hmm. the last since SpaceX started. I think space changed a lot. So it's not only NASA and ESA and and and, and, and the, the Roscosmos. There are a lot of private companies there, and I think space will be. Um, conquered by normal people now yeah absolutely and for these guys you need a you need you need a good watch so it we so we redefined the whole thing and there will be uh, an evolution of the cosmodot of course well i think it's... i'm probably the most excited man in the uk at the moment because i, <laughs> I it's a huge passion of mine um i i remember yeah. when the very first spacex dragon capsule launched um, I was sitting with a feature ready to say what watches the astronauts were wearing with a blank gap mm -hmm. because I couldn't find out. And of course, when they came with X-33s, I thought, oh, okay, yeah, I guess they're, you know, they're, they're, they're mission ready, but it, secretly in my heart, I was hoping for a traditional Speedmaster or something else, maybe, you know, <laughs> or something yeah. new, something completely maybe. new, you know, but, um, um maybe, yeah, well, of course. Um, cause, because what I did look, a while ago, we published a review. We didn't actually have the watch, but we had um, from your press people. It was the, <clears throat> excuse me, the Amadi watch, the Mission to Mars watch. Um, Amadi, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I thought that was really superb. And I wondered, was that an indicator of where your thought process might be going? Because I, I'm guessing now there will obviously be an official tender for astronauts to take watches to other planets it must be it must exist of course. already that that's the vision behind the amade project because we we're working now with the space forum and they're doing these analog mars missions on earth so they try testing what i think the nasa do it all, also now quite a, now at the moment yeah. with uh, uh, sending analog astronauts four weeks into a camp and try to live on the mars and uh, see where where, where uh, what has to be developed for the future. And we are mm -hmm. part of this Amadi project and the, the, the next project will be in 24. And we are, we are already on board and we have already developed the, the, the watch for, for this project. Wow. Uh, okay. so there will be the next Amadi, uh, Amadi watch and it will be part of this cosmonaut evolution um, collection, of course. Uh, and uh, it, for us, it's quite important because if you want to be on Mars, you have to work with the professional people and you have to find out what's, what's the problem on, on, on Mars, which what we still don't know. Everybody's talking about that we are going to Mars next year. So I, I don't think it will be take minimum 10, 20, 30 years yeah. to go on Mars if we ever go there. We'll be lucky to get to the moon in the next year. Yeah, I think we are not able to go to the mule, but we want to go to Mars. No, but yeah. if, if we want to, if we're going to Mars, I want to be the watch. That's, that's, is, well, we're that's behind you a hundred percent. I mean, I think it's <laughs> wonderful because I think, um, I, I was speaking to one of my colleagues yesterday, um, prior to talking to you and I said, you have got, and, and, and I, I don't mean to make you feel even better about the company, but I think you have got the single best PR photograph ever taken of a watch which is the, yeah, the b42 the <laughs> floating there with the window around it into the earth behind yeah. it it's at that point yeah. i don't know how everybody just didn't buy one because at that point you think i'm sold of course and i think that, i think it, it, it it's it's not only this photo this this this, this picture but it has it, it is the watch with the most time spent in space, like all watch, this is the, the, the no watch on Earth has more, spent more time on in space like the cosmonaut, and that's yeah. history. So, do you have a museum in the facility that has actual space watches? Yeah, I'm I'm sitting right here now in in our museum. We call it museum, but at the end, it's an uh, it's an event working uh, space 
room where, where, where we can show all the the new collection of course so you see we have this I try to we have this bar the fortis bar uh where we can, where right. can have cold, cold drinks which is quite important for us we have a lounge here we have um you see we have monoliths all right for every collection we, we have one monolith to explain very, the collection and that's of very course, Stanley, we have Stanley Kubrick. Of, yeah, it is. <laughs> it is space. Uh, yeah. uh, and of course, we have one wall of history where uh, mounted around 400 watches of, from the old, from the past. So Whoa. you can visit us anytime if you want. If, if somebody is interested, make an appointment. We will, we will, uh, you, can, you can visit us anytime and we will show us, show you the museum. And of course, we explain the new watches and you can take all, uh, see all the old, old watches. And this is just the 400 watches on the wall. This is just a small part of the watches we have on stock. <laughs> well, from, I from think you past. may regret making that invitation because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, it's, I it's think we'll hard. take you it up on that. It's myself, so. <laughs> Okay. Oh, it's, it's hard work. <laughs> Sold. Okay. I, th I think you'll find myself and a film crew will be turning up next week. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, always invited. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you so much. I mean, you obviously the B42, the, the whole space thing, I won't lie, is my passion, the same as yourselves. Um, but yeah. outside of that world, where do you want to take four to say in the next three to five years? What's, what's the vision? What can you tell us? Though the vision in, in, in a long term, not only for the three or five years, I think at, uh, in the next 10, 20 years at the end, when I, when I finish and I give it to my sons, it should be a stable, a solid family owned company. Uh, we don't want to be one of uh, one of these big concerns. We want to be an independent brand working by themselves, do what they want and be a stable, solid family company. This is, this is the vision all about. Uh, and if, of course we want to be named with all the other big brands. We want to be, we want to keep it as a small company, a big brand, but a small company, uh, which still produces in the old fashioned way by hands <laughs> and not by computers. Yeah. Um, and, but we want to be named with the big guys because I think Fortis has a history for it. And, uh, I don't know the English words, but at the end of the Fortis is one of these old yeah. historic Swiss watch brands. And I want, that the whole world will know this. That's the vision behind. Well, we will certainly do our bit to help that. Um, yeah, I hope so. I, Thank you. I, I, <laughs> I, I, think, I think I think your lineage, your heritage that you've got, the fact that you are so intrinsically connected to the space program, the fact that you've been making dive watches since the golden age of diving, the fact that your one of your latest designs is also connected to the space program, the fact there's something unbelievably exciting coming up shortly. Um, I, yeah. All we can do is say, I think you'll probably achieve your goals and wish you well. And um, on that, I would like to thank you so much for giving up some of your day for us. I hope we can stay in touch. Thanks for the talk. <laughs> of course, yeah. of course. Um, Call me anytime. No problem. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you very much, Duke. Just stay with us just for a minute, will you? And I'll just bid everybody farewell. Say thank you so much for tuning once again into the Watch Gecko YouTube channel. Please subscribe to the channel and the magazine. And we'll see you very soon for some great new watch-related video content.